Hello, it's Denise with Mindy Gray Mama, and I am here um, today to do another unboxing. I feel like <laughs> I'm doing an awful lot of unboxings uh, for my depth year, but I just got the El Goliath tarot deck, and I'm super duper excited. Um, so I'm going to do a, a depth year update, uh, <laughs> but this definitely wasn't in my plan of purchasing this deck. Um, and then I saw that it was available <laughs> through Amazon and, um, yeah, so that was just, it was just too good of an opportunity to pass up because this deck, it says on here, um, this is, so this is the El Goliath Tarot deck by Goliath. Um, and it says it's a shamanic shadow deck. And one of the things that I really do want to work on uh, this year is, uh, shadow work. And so I guess it just kind of like fit together. Uh, plus it has extra cards and I was so super excited about that. And so, so I got it. So enough of the reasoning. Let me just go ahead and open it. Oh my gosh. Like I, um, I just started recently being able to kind of work with, uh, more darker themed decks, I guess you could say. And I don't know why that is, because for as long as I can remember, I've always loved, like, reading, like, horror novels, I, you know, horror movies. Like, I uh, I haven't ever had a, an issue with that, but, um, but yeah, just as far as tarot decks, like, I never was attracted to darker decks. Um, and then I saw some pictures of this one, and I kind of, this just looks like an amazing deck. And it isn't colorful. Which, um, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, look at that. The El Goliath Tarot deck. A touch of magic, a touch of shadow, a twinkle of beauty, a spark in tarot, a feeling of mystery, a feeling of ponder. Shuffle the cards and take a wander. <laughs> my gosh, it is amazing. Um, but it is like black and white and normally that's another thing I wouldn't go for is black and white because I am so incredibly attracted to colors and colorful things but this this time in my life this just felt this just felt right so a little guidebook um let's see and I know there's other reviews so I won't take you know too long and go through it too in depth but um but I did have someone to ask me to do the walkthrough when I got it. And I love doing these because it helps me to bond with the deck. So I am doing it. Art is how I see myself, how I express myself. It's my interpretation of the world I am in. Art and creation are the only things that I never get sick of. They heal me and lift me, keeping me buoyant every time I'm down or feeling like I'm sinking. It's from the back. So I did, I was prepared for the tiny font. Tiny, tiny font. <laughs> like I can definitely read it. It's not gonna be like too hard for me to read. And I do appreciate having the information. So if it was a choice between not having all the information and you know, a larger font or having a larger font without all the information and having the information with the tiny font, I pick the tiny font. It's just, um, I'm going to take it slow with this book. Oh my gosh. Hmm. So it's interesting. <laughs> I just kind of got caught up because I was looking at some of the titles of the majors and I guess I didn't realize that. Um, so like it says for the fool, it doesn't say the fool. It says um, Lamat. Lamat. So that's interesting. Okay, so the titles are like La, La Pop, La Pape, the Hierophant. I don't know how you pronounce those. I'm completely. Oh yeah, so I guess it's La Pop. Is it French? La Marose. I don't know if that's how you say that, but for the lovers. So anyway, that's interesting. I did not know that before. 
But yeah, it is all uh, kind of horizontally laid out, but I can deal with that. That's completely fine. I'm really excited to read about the bonus cards. Like that is one of the reasons the shadow work aspect and the bonus cards are the most exciting parts about this deck for me. So, and it looks like it's a really good amount of information for the, um, for the guidebook. Like it's, because it's quite a bit on here because of the small size of the, the font. And so you have like the whole back page and then the front for the um, majors. And then the minors have, you know, like this whole section here and a nice picture. It has keywords, the energy of the card, and reversed keywords. So. I'm so excited. Oh, and it goes right to like the very back page is actually uh, a card. So that's kind of cool. Like that's actually the back. All right. So moving on into the cards. Ah, they kind of slipped around a little bit in the, um, in the packaging. Although, I mean, it's still pretty much intact. So it's just like a little smushed on one side. But the cards look like they're fine. I don't know what it is about this deck. It just feels like a big event in my life, like getting this deck. And it's, oh my gosh, look how thick that is. And all the pretty gilding on the side. That was like a big deck. And so the back has some color in it, which is interesting. Like a little bit of green and the gold. Although I like it. I like that a lot. I guess I need to read the book. I don't know what that is exactly. It could be like a close-up of something, but to me it looks like, you know, like when you're flying overhead and like of a forest or something with different, uh, I don't know. Or maybe it's moss, like a close-up of moss. You know, I don't know what that is with the infinity sign on the top, but that's really interesting. Okay. So I'm going to try to do a full flip through, but I don't want this to be super long video, but we'll see how it goes. So... Okay, so I see, like, I, I did hear some people say about the font wasn't always easy to read over here, um, like on this side where it says the fool, and then in the middle you have elf fool, <laughs> and then the eternal vagabond, which is interesting because didn't it say, like, so in the book it says uh, zero, it says, I'm going to knock, I don't want to knock my cards over, it says Lamat, the fool, the eternal vagabond. And then in on the card it says the fool, El Fool, the Eternal Vagabond, and then a tiny little uh, copyright. Copyright the El Goliath Tarot Deck. And I really like this. I like that it's like because this it's like animals, but it's not quite completely like animals in their own, like completely what we would think of as natural habitat, like on earth, because they have like these little like additions, which are almost like man-made items. Um, so we have the fool. And the magician. And it is hard to read this font. But that's not going to really bother me once I get familiar with the deck. I love that with like the different, like the headdress. Look at the eyes though. Like, that's amazing. They just look so like, like otherworldly. Like they're staring into your soul, you know? They're not staring at you. Like they're looking into your soul. I love that. Oh, and I love this high priestess. Hmm. And I like how the trees are like the pillars. That's very nice. The Empress. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this Empress card. Uh, Empress is like one of the cards like that I kind of connect with in the deck. Um, so I'm going to have to work with this one and see. But I just like the, it's like, got, it's very, like, I don't know. It's got that air of like, majesty about it you know it's very regal so I, I do like that it's very I mean Empress like the royalty of it all like it's got that energy so the Emperor <laughs> I love it 
and the Hierophant, the Master of Keys. This is another one. Um, I had done one of the videos for the um, 31 Days of Tarot was what card do you look for in a deck when you're getting a new deck? And mine was the Hierophant. And so this one is a really interesting rendition of a Hierophant. And I'm very excited to read the book and hear what... Uh, you know, what the artist had to say about that particular card and why he chose those images. Lovers. Chariot. That's interesting. Sorry, I'm like staring at it. I'm off of my own world. That's always a good sign when like I'm looking at deck and I first get it and I'm just already like taken into the world of that deck before I've even like really sat down to work with it. But I love how like the, the flower petals and then the air like in the hair like give the movement. But you still have like the horse and you have like the, the light and the shadow, you know, on the mountains with the sun hitting the one side. I like that. Injustice. That's interesting. The Doves of Equality. <laughs> the Hermit. Oh, look at that. I love how, like, some of the cards have, like, this, like, almost looks like fairy dust, like magic, you know, stars and stuff around them. It just, it's, like, beautiful and, like, earthy and like of the world but also otherworldly at the same time like because I'm very into that whole like fairy world like you know reality so oops this, two. this one is the wheel of fortune the great wheel it's interesting because it's not like one specific animal but I like that strength That's going to be an interesting one. Like, I do want to read about that to see. Because I I do, like, get it. Because, like, a lot of times snakes are a symbol of femininity. Or not feminine, but just of the feminine, you know? Like, the feminine, um, like, spirituality. Like, a snake is usually, not usually, but it can represent that. So I do see, like, you know, the, the female and then the, the lion, um, so I can see how that works. So we have the little infinity sign down there. Um, also, it is a venomous snake. So I am assuming, I don't know if it's like snake charming the lion, like it's doing its little snake bob and like, because the lion looks a little confused to me, but I don't know if he's like, if that's what the intention is. So I, I can't wait to read the book. I like to speculate on what the cards mean before I read the book. Um, just kind of see if I'm on the same page and then where I'm different. Oh, that's always fun. The Hanged Man, the Suspended Monkey. Gotta love that. So you have a mala in his, his hand. He's got like a, like, you know, almost like a little um, mandala or like a, you know, the chakra symbol with the little ohm in it. With the, like the little petal. He looks wise, like if, especially if you turn it over and you look at his face, like he looks very wise. And he's hanging on by his tail. That's interesting. And then death. I also thought it was interesting that some of these cards had a dark border and some of them have a white border. But I can see where a white border on this might detract from the image where the black gives the main part of the image like more oomph. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like it. And this is just such an interesting death card with like this. The snake skeleton. I'm assuming that's a snake skeleton. And then you, know, you have a moth and you have a little skull here. You have the horns and everything. So it's the snake skeleton that's really intriguing to me. So I'm, I'm really excited to read the book on this one. Temperance. I love this one. It's just beautiful. Oh, and then this one, the devil. This one I was, like, interested to see for myself, like, when I opened it, um, because I, uh, I don't know, like, I saw, 
this online before I purchased it and I was like what is going on <laughs> it's really creepy and it's really creepy it's really creepy in real life too yeah master of lies I like that it's not just he's not just like a liar no he is the master of lies like the eyes look crazy that's what it's like the eyes are crazy the tower is the Trees on fire with the birds. Looks like, oh no. <laughs> like, it looks like that bird is crying. And look, they have like the little babies and they're not, you know, they're too like little to, to fly. So, I mean, are they stuck there? Are they gonna be able to get them out? Like what's gonna happen? Oh goodness. And it just, you know, that brings back all the thoughts about, you know, that we had the horrible wildfires that had happened not too long ago. And like, you know, you think about the people first, obviously, but the animals, you know, and the wildlife in that area, like, it's just hard to comprehend what must have happened. So that's a tough card. And then the star, it's such an interesting star. It's like a tree trunk that's like cracked open. I like that. It's a different way to think about it. And again, I'm going to read the book and see what, what there is to say about that. The moon. Let's see. It was the star, the cosmic guide. And the moon is the silver shadow reflector. I like that. It's just simple. It's like just a moon, but it's just so gorgeous. And the sun, the beams of life. Also, top. And then <laughs> judgment, the transcendence. He almost looks like like he's crying out. You know what I'm saying? Like at first I'm like, is he angry? And he could be angry, but it also looks like he could be like crying out for help, like something's wrong, like you know, it makes me think of like global warming. I don't know. Like there's a lot, there's a lot to take in with that card. And the world, the sacred circle. Oh, how gorgeous is that? Just beautiful. So here we have the suit of cups and the ace of cups with like the little like talons reaching out to grab the cup. I don't know something about this deck like I just like I'm like oh, smiling I love it I love it so much look at this two of cups that's an interesting one because those to me those snakes like I'm not seeing <laughs> I don't see them and think oh happiness you know um so that's interesting and we have like the light and the dark and you can see like kind of like inequality you know thing like so they're they're even um, evenly matched so it's interesting and then they're like on a desert it looks like desert and dunes behind them and this one is one of the ones that I'm going to I think always think of pinnacle the suit of pinnacles like <laughs> until I get used to this deck because even though that's not a pinnacle like it does not look to me like a cup of any sort <laughs> and so this is a three of cups the trinity triangle so I get it's a triangle so I mean that works and I think once I get used to it maybe it'll click in my head but I see that and I'm like that does not look anything like my first thoughts of you know three of cups three of cups energy but it does have the triangle so it definitely has the three so yeah <laughs> interesting and the four of cups the wandering mind Look, I love how the cat's head is resting on a book, like, because there, there's a book, and but they're not reading it, so they're not, like, actively, like, focused on the book. The cat isn't. The cat's, like, just sitting there, and you can kind of see, like, the, you know, like, when someone's eyes kind of glaze over, and you can tell, like, they're in their own world, like, they're not with you right now. <laughs> I'm familiar with that look because I have kids and a husband. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's what those eyes look like to me, just like far off, far away. Maybe thinking about, reflecting what, what they just read. 
interesting, interesting four of cups. Five of cups, the spilt regret. I had, to, I had to look at that twice to make sure it said uh, spilt instead of split. Just because of, it, it is, you know, interesting font, so it takes a second. The Six of Cups, the reuniting water home. Aw, so it was like a reunion. It's like they've been, maybe they've been away from each other for a while, and they come to the water hole, and then they, they meet up again. <sighs> The Seven of Cups, the Tentacles of Illusion. This is also um, a card that I have a history with, so I like I like to see what's going on in the Seven of Cups. And I like that. I mean, it's the Seven of Cups with the different stuff coming out, so that's going to be easy for me to read because that is something I'm familiar with, although I'm just trying to see what's coming out of all these. Interesting. Eight of Cups. Look at that. Isn't that? Oh, one's sliding. I have to see if these are sliding cards, but I just love that. Like the stairs up to this doorway. Because when I look at it from a distance, like I think pyramid, and then you know, when you look closer, it's, it's stairs going up to this doorway. I don't know what that says right, right here. Um, and then we have all these cups. That are being left behind. I get a feeling like to me, I don't know, it's weird, but I get a feeling like once the the cat goes up and goes through this doorway, like the whole thing is gonna just disappear. So it's like kind of like a final um like farewell like to these things here. Like that's not there's once you make this decision, there's no coming back. But I don't know why I think that. In my mind, I'm just like there's a portal to another world. The Nine of Cups. We got all the fish and the cups in here. Just trying to count and see. There's nine, but the contented pelican. Pelicans are my favorite bird, so I'm so glad that there's a pelican in this deck. The Ten of Cups, the joyous sky. I love that. I love the image, like the imagery of like whales, like and, and fish, but whales and dolphins, especially like flying through like space. <laughs> and so this is kind of like very close to that. So I really like that. The Page of Cups, the Sister of Roses. The Knight of Cups, the Brother of the Wild. I love that. Love wolves. Like I get a feel, like a feeling like you know so he's calling and you see this like coming out of his mouth and you see all like the different like spirit wolves so I just get like a feeling of like ancestry like calling to the ancestors I don't know why and it's the Knight of Cups but so I'm, I don't know why I'm getting that like idea but that's kind of the idea I get and knowing that wolves are endangered and so like you almost have to call to to spirit animals instead of real animals like which is sad. But Queen of Cups, the Mother of Crystals. I love that. With the crystal crown. And there's like a shooting star. And the King of Cups is the Chief Eagle. And it's like thunder, you know, back here. Very interesting. It's interesting because they're not like... Well, I don't think any of those were water animals and cups, you know, the very like watery. Um, yeah, none of them <laughs> is a it's a bird and then, you know, a bear, a wolf and a, or it's an eagle, a bear, a wolf and a deer. So that's interesting. Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles is the juggling snake. Three of Pentacles is the Three Wise Masters. Now this one is like, this, this one's like weird to me. Like I'm like, there's this cat sitting here with these three like 
cloaked beans with it looks like the head mask on like it i don't know is it maybe it's i don't know it, that is really bizarre to me so i'm gonna have to again read in the book and see what that's all about the four of pentacles is the prudent mountain goat he's got the little pinnacles at the bottom of his feet Well, it looks like there might be, these might be a couple other mountain goats right here. Oh yeah, this is a sad one. The Five of Pentacles, Hardship Mountain. Like I know that, I guess you could read it like this light is coming down on these poor animals um, as like maybe divine grace, like to get them out of their situation. But when I see this, like what I feel like is... Your hardship's almost over. Um, for these animals, their hardship's almost over because it looks like they're maybe about to pass on into the next like, plane of existence. That's how I read it. I'd like to think that, um, like, there's this, they're magically just going to be okay because that's, like, really hard to look at. And you have, you know, like, the birds circling, and it's, like, obviously, like, two animals that care very much about each other. And that is just so tragic, like, that's sad, you know, but to me, I feel like I see this light and it's like their hardship is almost over, but not because they're going to get better, but because they're going to pass on into the next um, plane of existence. But not that I would read that necessarily to be true for it <laughs> in a reading, but uh, that's how I read this card when I see it. Oh my. It's just... Oh gosh, it takes me back to the never ending story and they're going through the the swamp or whatever and that poor horse. I don't know, that's just flash back to childhood, I suppose. Six of Pentacles, the sacred white scale bull. That's interesting. The scale bull. And I don't know what that means. But I would like to know. Hmm. I'm just trying, trying to see what's in the scales. It just looks like spheres. Like maybe crystal crystal spheres. All right, we have the seven of pinnacles, the rewarded frog. Because he sat there and waited. <laughs> because that's where all the flies were. Competing with the plant. Hmm. Eight of Pentacles is the patient weaver. Oh, goodness. The Nine of Pentacles is the tranquil spotted doe. Oh, look at that. And like, I don't know, you know, it's not necessarily a garden, but it's like maybe hopefully a nice, safe, you know, secluded spot. It's tranquil, at least. Ten of Pentacles, the Oyster of Metatron. This one, I just, I don't know why this cracks me up, but it has like the Tree of Life. Um, maybe these are black pearls, like, I don't know, but Tree of Life inside this oyster. The idea, I mean, I'm sure there's really good reasoning behind it, but, um, but yeah, just the idea of like the tree of life in an oyster is interesting to me. And you have all, all this, like, I don't know if it's bubbles or if it's like magic sparks, like coming out. So that's really interesting. Page of Pentacles, the butterfly snow vixen. Just gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. The Knight of Pentacles, the Aztec Hawk Warrior. Look at that, that looks fierce. Aztec Hawk Warrior. And this is the Knight of Pentacles. So that's something that I'm gonna have to think about because it's not the Knight of Swords, it's the Knight of Pentacles. Because I think air, I think, you know, Hawk, it's air, air, to me a sword so queen of pentacles the indian henna mother oh 
Oh, man. There's a lot going on in that card. It's interesting because, like, they have all these butterflies here, and they're all, like, just white. Or maybe they're moths. But they're just white with, like, a little spot. They almost look like blank pieces in the, in the artwork. It's interesting. Because everything else is so detailed, and you have these, like, white butterflies. King of Pentacles, the father of roses. And it's interesting too that the daughter, I think it was the daughter of roses, was the the page of cups, maybe. I have to go back through and check, but then you have the king of roses, or the father of roses is the king of pentacles. So that's interesting. Let me just check real fast. If I can find it quickly. Uh, sister so a sister so the page of cups is the sister of roses and then the king of pentacles is the father of roses so that's interesting that they're the sister and the father and they're in separate suits ace of wands i love that although it's like a water creature and a wand again that's like gonna really like do a number on my brain. And then we have the two of wands, lightning struck antenna. That looks like, you know, antlers to me. Just on first glance, but I do love that. And then the three of wands, the creative bone prism. That's interesting. And then we have like some sacred geometry on here. Love that. The Four of Wands, the Beaming Vessel. Four of Wands, the Beaming Vessel. I don't know if you can see, it looks like, um, she's like, there's this sea, mother sea turtle and she's like swimming through the ocean. She's beaming out light and it looks, I'm assuming that that's like eggs that she's carrying inside of her, like the seed of life, you know, like new life that she's going through the ocean so that she can um, you know, lay these eggs to continue on, you know, the circle of life and all that. So it's just, oh, sea turtles. That's interesting. And the five of wands, the jaggered union. Hmm. Six of Wands, El, the El Goliath Hive. That was, it's interesting. Of like completely covered with bees, and you can see a little bit of honeycomb in there. And so you've got these bees all around, and you've got the flowers. It almost looks like almost looks like dogwood to me, but I'm not sure, you know. But it's just really interesting. For the Six of Wands. Hmm. Seven of Wands, the Determined Otter. Hmm. And the Eight of Wands, the Meteor Shower. I like this one because it's just looks amazing, like epic. You know, it's got all the meteor, you know, coming down. But it also reminds me a lot of um, imagery that I'm familiar with for the Eight of Wands. So for me, like this will, this card will be a bit easier to read. And then we have the Nine of Wands, Darkness Before Dawn. I like that one a lot um, because that is a lot of what I think about when I think of Nine of Wands. And you don't necessarily have to have, I think, like a central figure. I think just the, the trees, you know, because they're kind of crossed. So you get that feeling. I think for me the same feeling of like um like a barrier so I like that and then you you have like you know it's it's dark in the forest and then the sun's just coming up so it's nice ten of wands the overburdened beetle okay it took me a second to figure out what that said right there the overburdened beetle and it's like a thorny Crown almost like it almost looks like a thorny crown with the the wands going through it. 
the overburdened beetle. That's interesting. Huh. The crown of thorns, like almost like a, like a martyr, you know, like symbolism for a martyr. And then you have like the crossed wands, page of wands, the moonscaped messenger. Look at that. Look at that face. <laughs> I love it. Wow. That is just, that's just powerful. The Knight of Wands, the kind-hearted moose. I love moose. I wouldn't want to just like be running through the forest and meet one, but I do like the energy, like moose energy from afar. Oh, kind-hearted moose. Queen of Wands is the Cosmic Huntress. And this is just amazing. You have like the whole, um, almost looks like a dream catcher thing here with the feathers. And then she's got like stars in her eyes. Very cosmic -y looking with like a starry night background. King of Wands, the glowing white stag. Wow. Love it. And Ace of Swords on the snake next to the sword. So that's interesting. This one is definitely bizarre. The Two of Swords, the blind seal. Not only is he blind, he has um, the candles coming out of his eyes. So I'm like in my mind, it, like I'm, I don't know why that's there. Um, I'm going to have to read the book, but... I mean, it doesn't look like it's causing the seal any pain like in this depiction so um but that's just i don't know did he just was he so illuminated like <laughs> enlightened that like he just went blind i don't know that's just interesting or he's just blind to the decisions the choices i had i don't know what that's about three of swords the bleeding raw heart so this is an interesting depiction of that. It has like, so it's like a tree stump. Um, and it has like this weird like a container with a heart in it. And it's been broken into by these three swords. So it was almost like this heart has been in a glass case, like preserved. And then these swords just came in and punctured like its little resting place. You got it. That's interesting. Four of Swords, the sacred space. Hmm. And then you have like a bunny, and he looks like he's just hanging out there. Doesn't look super relaxed, but maybe he is. I don't know. He's not like curled up. He's just kind of like falling over. Like he just can't take anymore. And then you have like these, just the outline of these swords here, but they're facing away from the bunny. It almost looks like he just fainted, you know, like just killed over. So <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I don't know that much about rabbits, so I can't really read rabbit sign language. So that might not be what that is a picture of, but that's just what it looks like to me when I first see it. And so we have the five of swords, the white scorpion versus the black scorpion. It's like the three white swords and the two black swords. A little scorpion and a big old scorpion. But it's almost like, but even though he's little, he has an advantage because he's got like this extra sword. So he's got like a little extra surprise or something, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he's tricky. Maybe that's what it is. It's like, oh, he's going to trick, you know, this big scorpion and win that way. We have the Six of Swords, the brand new journey. It's interesting. So you have like a bird. Wow. So you have like, it looks like flames down here with the sword sticking out and like these waves kind of coming up over here. It's like a little bit of a rough sea, but then off in the distance, there's like two tornadoes over the, over the water. Um, and like the, you know, uh, lightning. So like, out of, I just get like a very out of the frying pan into the fire type of uh, idea from this because even though this bird has got the nest, I'm assuming this is the mother, perhaps 
has the nest and is trying to save her children, has like the eggs in there. Um, Cause this obviously was not, this is a very, you know, unstable position right here, flying off, but it doesn't look a whole lot better this way. So, but really what choice, what choice was there? You know, so we have the seven of swords, the thief and the knight. And this is just like, You know, snakes, venomous snakes, but, um, but yeah, they eat eggs, so I, I guess I can understand that. So this is the seven, the seven of swords, thief in the night. And the eight of swords is the imprisoned bear. And I'm just, you know, trying to figure out, so this bear is... Like, I almost get the sense that this bear is standing, like, on top of some ice and is, like, broken its way, you know, trying to break its way through the ice. Got its head, head down there under the water, like, trying to get at something. But then how is it in prisons? I don't know. But the swords are, like, holding it back from something. Imprisoned bear. The Nine of Swords, the Overwhelmed Sea Turtle. Look at that. It got all the swords hanging above its head. You know, something's like weighing heavy on it, like heavy on its mind. Like something's being held over it. Nine of swords and this giant wave. Giant, huge wave is cresting back there. About to like oh, totally overwhelm, like an overcome the sea turtle. And then the ten of swords, the barren desert. So... So the tree, you know, has got all the swords in it and it looks like, you know, it's like got the blood coming down and it looks like all of these birds back here have been um, killed, but there is one bird left at the base of the tree. So it makes you wonder what happened. Hmm. We have the Page of Swords, the Sword Bearing Sister. We've got the Sword Bearing Sister, and she's got like this glowing sword. Interesting. And the Knight of Swords, the Hooded Brother. And you can see all these little animals here. I don't know what those are. Meerkats. And they're all just kind of like, you know, hypnotized by the snake. Knight of Swords, the Hooded Brother. Mm. And the Queen of Swords, the Baroque Queen, perhaps. That font was a little hard right now. Baroque Queen. Yeah. That's interesting. And then we have King of Swords, the Father of the Knight. Oh, wow. This is interesting because you can almost barely see, you know, the King of Swords, but you do see like the, he's hunted down a, a rat or a mouse. The father of the knight. It's a knight hunter. And then, okay, so then that's, that is the deck. That is the 78 cards. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it only took me ages to go through. Holy cow. Okay. So then we have here, these must be the extra cards. So we have Caution, the Heedful Mouse. The mouse, like, oh, surrounded by a snake. Uh, Ojibwe Catcher, the Shadow Dream Catcher. I don't know if I was pronouncing that right. But it's like the Shadow Dream Catcher. Shadow Dream Catcher. Hmm, interesting. Expansion, the shedding snake. Shedding his old skin. Sacred heart, the heart and soul of Goliath. Look at that. Hmm. Karmic release, the sacred karmic deer. 
And so we have the image that was on the, the box of the deer with the butterflies coming out of its mouth as karmic release. Nature, the seed of life. Oh, I love this one with the pine cone, like the magical pine cone. Love it. Love it, love it. It's such like sacred imagery of pine cone. And sacred fire, the rebirthing bonfire. Wow. You have all the horns there at the base of the fire. Karmic soul tribe, the family. Oh, whale. Oh, whales. Hmm. Hidden inner strength, the shadow cat. Oh, look at this. You have this little cat sitting right here, and then you got the shadow of, looks like a wolf behind the cat. That's interesting. And then, oh, this one is creepy. Masks, the hidden wolf. So it looks like the idea of like a wolf in sheep's clothing because it's got like sheep head, but it's not. Obviously, this wolf has been maybe after eating some sheep because he's got the super like like pointy teeth right all through there, like the extra pointy looking teeth and then the blood like rushing down. So and it's got like the wool all around. So it's definitely a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The shadow self, the dark inner swamp. You've got like this tree with the eyes in there. And, oh, this one doesn't have a title. I don't even know what to think about that one. <laughs> I have to stare at it for a while to even get my mind wrapped around what I'm looking at. And a shaman, a medicine healer. Star seed. Oh, I love it. The demiurge. Star seed. Oh man. Awesome. The sage. Uh sage the purity. Okay. And it's actually like a, a sage stick. As if you know it's like you know purifying. And then a yes card. <laughs> And a no card. So that is going to be so interesting. Okay, so these cards are big. And as per my usual, I sat down to do this without an actual regular size card. So just quickly, that is the Navigator's Tarot of the Mystic Sea. Pretty normal size tarot card, a little bit shorter and squattier. But we have the, <laughs> the Al Goliath card. So I'm going to see if I can just see if I can shuffle these a little bit real quick and then pull one card. Okay, so overhand shuffle is not too bad. I'm not going to try to play around with doing a ripple shuffle right now because of ripple shuffle because <laughs> because I think um, I'm going to have to work on that and figure out the best way to do that. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad I got this deck. Okay. Sage. So uh, that's a bonus card, but I'll go ahead and read that one. And so it's not numbered. Um, so these extra cards... I'm going to have to just flip through till I find it. Of course, because it's already a long video. Okay, the purity. Keywords are, um, let's see, smudging your sacred space, taking an energetic shower, doing a deep metaphysical cleansing, allowing things to wash over you and leave your space or energetic field, removing any negative, toxic, or lower vibrational 
frequencies away from you that have latched onto you that are not of your own being's natural state of being. Releasing any unwanted emotions, purification of being, antibacterial properties, salt. If you have pulled this card, it means one of two things. You are either trying to heal yourself or protect yourself, both of which are vital. Are you trying either, you're either trying to heal yourself or protect yourself, both of which are vital. In this day and age, energy is being transferred at rates that are getting faster and faster. Remember, energy has memory, and the stronger the energy, the harder it is to cleanse or remove based on what its intent was. In this card, we see a large abalone shell uh, with a stick of sage on top. Burning this is commonly known as a smudge stick. This card is telling you that maybe it's time for a cleansing yourself in your arc field and in your home, workplace, or general general dwelling. Um, let's see, so then there's quite a little bit more. Um, and then at the bottom of it, it says, focus on your inhale and exhale of oxygen and vent it out with awareness and intention. Visualize your aura or seek out an energy healing from someone. So that's an interesting card. Like, I like having that. I'm going to leave it in the deck. Like my intention with this deck is to actually leave all of the, um, all of the bonus cards in when I do a reading. I am excited to work with the bonus cards actually. So that's pretty cool. And that's actually, so that was the last card. So that's the, uh, the back cover there. So I'm assuming, I don't see like a, a little meaning here for the yes or no card. So I'm assuming that's just, uh, they probably talk about it in the beginning of the book. Um, but it's interesting that this was the card that I pulled out first out of the deck. Yes. <laughs> I'm taking this to say, yes, it was a good idea to buy this deck. And yes, you're going to work with it just great. But the first thing I'm going to do is do a deck interview. Um, so I'm excited to go do that. So I know this is such a long video. If you're still here watching, you are amazing. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you again soon. Have a good one. Bye.